Hello folks, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited and welcome to the third and final part of my toolbox tour and this time it's the turn of the Stanley roller box. Now uh, we all know that van security is generally a load of old pants with the vehicle manufacturers doing very little to make their wagons bothersome for burglars. So like many others I'm in the habit of removing my primary tools from off the transit at the end of any given working day. Obviously I want this tedious exercise to be as quick and convenient as possible, so I have the ready gear stashed in three boxes overall. We've already had a uh, peek at the first two, so now we're going to delve into the heavier stuff. Let's start with a quick chat about the box itself. It has a retractable handle at the front and a pair of wheels at the rear. So the only actual lugging uh, with this box is to get it on and off the van. And I can do that via the, the handle at the top there. Um, for the most part, it can just be trundled around to where it needs to be. Um, in fact, for most jobs, it can just stay on the van. But if, it, um, if access to the goodies within is to be frequent, then it can be uh, hauled off and moved around onto site. The maximum carrying weight, I believe, is 12 kilos uh, and I, I may be exceeding that I must admit. Certainly it has seen better days uh, and there may not be an awful lot of life left in this one. So a great big crack down the back there. Now uh, this is the second one I've had since 2014. The first one the uh, the wheels eventually did drop off after uh, being trundled around on one rough site too many uh, and that now sits on the van as a permanent fixture containing uh, my cable offcuts. Uh, ordinarily um, here would sit a compartmentalised lidded tray containing Vargo connectors uh, but I can't show you that as we've left it in somebody's attic so I need to go back to site to retrieve that. Never mind, uh, let's pop this bad boy open shall we? Okay let's pop this bad boy open and address the elephant in the room. That elephant being sight of all this Ryobi gear. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure many of you have just pulled that face. You know the one like when the wife downs six cans of Guinness, points her ass at your head and quacks out a rasping sulfuric fart. You know what I'm talking about right? Right? I don't know, maybe that's just my wife, but I don't want to go off topic. The point here being that Ryobi are perhaps known as a DIY brand and are not intended for a proper tradesperson, so uh, what's all this lime green gear doing in here? And, my dear viewer, why did your nose and eyebrows likely rise in unison when I opened the box just now? Well, when I started the business, I invested about 14 grand into it, half of which was on the first van, and while I needed to get tooled up, my finances weren't limitless. So it's all very well drawling over Matabo, Milwaukee, Makita and DeWalt gear, to name but four acceptable brands a tradesperson should supposedly be seen with, but I didn't have the uh, readies to equip myself with all the necessaries from such brands, so much like the trainers in my old school days, my peers are sporting the Nike and Adidas while I get beaten up at home time for tramping around in a pair of five quid Adibop knockoffs. But anyway, you know what? I can't complain about the Ryobi stuff, it served me well. I'm on my second battery drill and my first multi-tool suffered a snap battery contact, but otherwise it's still the original gear, a little worse for wear, but ready and willing to fight yet another day. My colleague Nigel has Makita gear, uh, but he's had his fair share of failures, he's on his second or third drill I believe, and his SDS is currently in for repair. Also, in the Ryobi's favour, I like the colour. Sounds stupid, I know. But uh, I just don't like the red of Milwaukee, the blue of Makita, or the dark green of Matabo and Bosch there. They're just not visually pleasing to me. Mad, I know, but then many of our purchasing decisions in life do boil down to whether one actually physically likes the thing. So, yeah. <sighs> Anyway, I was actually swayed towards Ryobi back at the start after seeing the builder I was working with use a Ryobi drill and I figured if it was good enough for him then it would probably be fine for me. I later found he was just a feckin' tightwad who would spend as little as possible on his overheads and would beg, borrow or steal tools from anyone around him rather than equipping himself properly for the job. So he probably wasn't the best example to follow. Anyway, this gear has done alright by me so go on, get sniffy in the comments if you want but you can't tell me it's all crap when my own experience proves otherwise. Anyway, let's talk more action. Let's have a flick through this lot shall we? Oh look, one of my emergency supplies is in here, that's jolly handy. Oh, magic. Okay, um, first of all, right angle drill, handy for drilling through joists when you can't get um, a physical uh, physical drill in through the, um, the gap in the woodwork there, so I don't use that one too much, but uh, again, when you need it, you need it, and jolly handy it comes in too. Speaking of handy, uh, multi-tool. Um, I've got a mains driven one uh, which I never use because 
Uh, most of the time when you want to chop up someone's floorboard you've probably got the power off because you're doing other work there anyway uh, and it's just easier to have a, a battery one to hand so uh, that gets a lot of use. Incidentally uh, these blades can be quite expensive. Uh, this is a Saxton blade, don't know if you've heard of them, it's one of Nigel's little tips. He, he tends to come across with the odd gem every now and again and uh, finding Saxton blades was one of them so uh, you can actually get some, um, some reasonably priced blades if you go to Saxton's website and they're good blades as well. Um, if you chew through a lot of them you don't want to be paying for the sort of the Bosch prices at sort of 10-15 quid a shot when um, these work out in quantity to uh, two or three quid but you know I rate them they're good. Impact driver I, uh, this one's got a um, one of those thingamajigs on to keep your screw held in place and I just think I'm a uh, a big girl for using that. So he thinks a real man should need uh, need any assistance with holding the screw in place when you're drilling it, but I find that that's pretty good. Uh, it's essential to have an impact driver if you're not going to get very far getting floors up and things like that without it. The nail puller we covered in a previous video, the five lesser known tools video, so I don't need to uh, ruin my floor any further with that. Oh, we've got a pile of hole saws and drill bits, all like following my aforementioned uh, five lesser known tools video I've bought myself a new hole saw because that was a, a bit of a bugger using that blunt hole saw to get through the ceiling in that video but uh, we've already done uh, <laughs> we did a job uh, just um, on Friday last week where we had to drill out many many downlight holes so it's already seen some use uh, they're quite good these uh, these Bosch quick change things I do like those available from your screw fixes and tool stations SDS drill uh, it doesn't do chiseling this one. I do have a uh, STS chaser on the van, um, and more about that later. Uh, but uh, obviously if you want to knock holes in bricks, you need a decent SDS for it. Um, work light, I've got lots of work lights. Um, this one's quite good. Let's stick a battery in it, shall we? Has this one got any charge? Yes, it has. It can uh, swing around, it's very bright. You can set which portion you want to be on. Uh, or have the whole lot on um, and it's just a handy thing to have it's handy obviously I have got other work lights got several night searcher work lights they all require their own uh, charger or means of charging up uh, so it's handy to have a light where I can just take a battery that's got some power and whack it in um, it's nice to have that on the van available um, the standard drill this is the second one as I mentioned earlier I burnt through the first one but it did do several years and um, it was my fault burning it out because I was drilling through a chipboard floor at the wrong speed uh, with a hundred mil hole saw but we won't go into my mistakes there um, okay fast battery charger now getting a fast charger is essential when working out on site a lot of uh, drills my own included may come with a charger uh, but it'll take all day to fully uh, boost up one of my 5 amp hour batteries whereas this can charge one in about an hour. Incidentally one advantage of being equipped with a brand that few of us seem to use is that I know my batteries are generally safe on site. Nigel with his common as muck Makita has to watch that some low down dirty plumber or builder doesn't do a sneaky swap with their lower capacity or worn out batteries but uh, I don't have to worry about that so, so much because uh, no one else seems to have Ryobi kit on site, just me. Uh, we have a break here, I, I mentioned in my um, other toolbox video, uh, the second one, that I carry a couple of um, couple of jemmies in that box, but I've also got this this bad boy here, which looks like it means some business. Uh, what else we've got in here? We've got a couple of crimp tools, various different sizes of crimps, plastic mallet, uh, a bolster, oh, you know what, I don't think I've hardly ever used this, um, but I, it's handy to know it's there. A big meaty whacking stick, there's a couple of whacking sticks in here, but uh, obviously we've got a mallet here and uh, a claw hammer. The pad saw, that used to live in the toolbox, but I tend to sort of keep it in here now. I used to keep stabbing myself with it. CK armour slice, uh, I use that obviously for well, uh, terminating, uh, terminating armoured cables. Uh, they're, they're pretty good, obviously you can just do it with a, a um, hacksaw, uh, so it's one of those things that some people look at and go, oh, why do you bother? But I've got it, it comes in handy, it works, it does the job, jolly good. Conduit cutters, uh, fish tape. One of various means of getting cables where they need to be from the uh, 
the rods to the fucking useful wire to the fish tape one way or another hopefully I can get my cable where it needs to be obviously that um, sort of pays out and you can shove it in places that perhaps rods can't get into and then you can retract it back by turning the, uh, the side there mole grips this is interesting I mentioned in the last video the, the second video um, about Boddington's tools this is another Boddington's tool uh, that I bought um, I, I was reviewing them for electrical times they gave me a couple of hand tools and I bought some others uh, so I could really sort of play with them this is a um, a knife for use on armoured cables you can see you've got the, the funny blade here which allows you to get it down the the, um, uh, the sheath and slice it back um, and also to cut around the curve of the cable so that's, uh, that's quite an interesting thing BD rated although probably not wanting to be working on an armoured cable while it's live I would hope um, there's various other hand tools sort of chucked in here, literally chucked in here. This, this is a quite a mess in here, it really needs a, a vac out. We've got a couple of scrapers. I can never find a scraper when I need one. Now I know I've got two in there, so that's handy. Another sort of jemmy pry bar affair. Various screw, um, screw drill bits. Uh, long wing tip bits, that one's blunt, needs replacing. Um, long SDS bits. There's a 20 mil one there, uh, just because when you need to make an hole, well, you need to have the right thing to make the hole with. I seem to have lots of 20 mil bits, I'm not sure why that is. 100 mil hole saw for your um, fan vents. Um, what's that? It's got to be an 86 or something, hasn't it? Uh, 86, yeah, there you go. Um, probably for the larger down lights. And that's blunt, so uh, that can come out and not go back in again. And that's pretty much it for the roller box. Um, now, some honourable mentions, some things that aren't in here, but I, I ought to mention that I've got anyway. Where are they? Uh, these, uh, they're rarely used. I don't, they don't tend to be kept to hand. I can't find where I'm... Oh, it's behind me. Here we go. Yeah. So I don't, I don't tend to keep them in the hand of the roller box, but I do also have a jigsaw and whoop, not the camera it's not much room to work in here a grinder and knock in the camera again a battery circular saw okay uh, this this one here uh, this is used for chopping up chipboard floors incidentally here's a fact for you tongue and groove chipboard was actually invented by satan himself and put on this earth specifically to give lazy builders an easy day while pissing off any tradesperson who needs to get back under the frigging floor again in the future i mean i hate chipboard um I, we, we, we just had a job on friday where we had to cut some up uh, so that comes in handy for that because otherwise you're in a world of pain that's a true fact that is uh, so keep it in mind in case you ever get asked it in a pub quiz anyway that's the end of the toolbox stores obviously there are other tools not shown here like my sds chisel i mentioned earlier the endoscope camera other work lights and such which which aren't part of the day-to-day -day loadout but they are present and will perhaps be talked about another time as always let me know if anything you think i'm missing as i'm always on the lookout to spend company money on yet another tool i didn't know i needed and probably haven't got room for See you next time.